Last couple of weeks you've heard from Elliot and Sam about what's happening with the small group. They've talked about certain elements, and I want to conclude with prayer and care as far as our small group responsibility is with one another. The Christian life and the church exist and function in small groups. Now, we come together as far as the church is concerned, and we sing praises, and we hear a sermon, and we enjoy fellowship with one another, but that's not really where the church functions. It's a part of the church, but where the church really gets involved with one another is in the small groups, what we call the life groups. So I want to take a few minutes and just tackle these two aspects of prayer and care. They're the critical parts of the life groups. The third pillar of our church is prayer. We say it like this, believing firmly in the power of prayer. You and I know that we ought to pray. We know that we ought to pray a lot more than what we do. But why don't we? Honestly, it's tough. It's really hard to pray. Because we as human beings are communicating with an almighty, infinite God who is very holy, who loves us, but also we know we're not holy. Prayer is that aspect that draws us to the very presence of God. If we're going to become prayer warriors in this church, if we're really going to be a church that believes firmly in not just prayer, but the power of prayer, honestly, we've got to have one another to be able to learn this discipline, this spiritual discipline. Prayer is a priority in our church. Prayer is important to us, and we all need to grow in understanding what prayer is all about. Prayer is a part of the existence of a, a Christian. So when we get together... In our small groups, each small group will determine their involvement with prayer. Sometimes you'll have the whole prayer group, or the, the whole time, uh, in prayer. Sometimes you'll pray uh, in sections with people, in, in, uh, in your accountability sections. But prayer is going to be a part of that small group. Prayer is going to open our hearts to one another and to God. Each life group that is involved with this prayer aspect will find itself interacting not only with each other in the group, but also with other small groups that maybe the need is greater than what that small group can handle. So we'll share with, with the, another person, maybe about a physical need that we'll talk to in just a, a few moments. Prayer is a very, very important, important part of this church. Third pillar. It's for you and me and Hope Chapel. The second thing that I want to share with you this, this morning is about the caring that in, is involved with the small group. Every small group is the first line of caring in our church. In most churches, when a person has a need, a person is sick or something like that, the whole church at large comes involved. But that doesn't really give the singular aspect of my friend helping me. So what we do at Hope Chapel we're going to have care a major part of each small group so that if somebody becomes sick or somebody has an illness, that small group is going to be the one that f at, at the very beginning helps that individual out. And if they can take care of the whole thing, fantastic. But if they can't, then we bring in the church, okay? But our responsibility in the care group, in the, in the small group, is to give care for one another because of a specific biblical pattern that we find in the New Testament. All over the New Testament, over a hundred times, you'll find what I call the one another verses. And they're the aspect where we as people care for one another. Let me just give you a couple of these. Mark chapter 9 says, be at peace with one another. John 13 says, love one another. Romans 12 says, we are of one body with one another. Live in harmony. Welcome one another. Instruct one another. Greet one another. Wait for one another care for one another, serve one another, bear one another's burdens, be kind, submit, teach, admonish, encourage. Over and over and over again, we're told one another. And that means you and I involve our lives one with another. Because if we're not doing this, we're not doing what the church wants us, or what Christ wants the church to do. So there are, I would say, three different aspects where we care. First one is the physical aspect that I've already mentioned. Second one is the spiritual aspect where we seriously look at the hearts of those that are near us and say, how are you doing spiritually? Third aspect is what I call a sinner care. And that means simply this. In every small group, there will be an empty chair. 
That chair is to remind us that there are people outside of this life group who need this life group. And so we will pray oftentimes for the individual whom God will bring into that chair. And we will encourage one another to invite people to come because they have those needs. I I am concerned that we stay a church that has a small church mentality. God's going to help us grow. We're going to, there are going to be a time where we move out of this church because of the size and the amount of people that are coming. But if we ever lose the encouragement and the desire to help one another, our church loses the very heart and soul of what it is. So our responsibility is to care for one another and to pray for one another because that's what our church is all about. I look forward to being able to start uh, life groups with you and enjoy hearing the stories. God bless you.